Hi guys, Lauren Amelio Ventry. I am so excited to talk to you about something that's super important and I feel like not enough people know the correct way or actually do these things in between clients. So very, very important is how to clean and sanitize your brushes. Just wrapped up a masterclass. I have educated thousands of makeup artists from around the world and a big question of mine is how do you clean brushes in between clients? How do you clean them every day and what do you do weekly? So I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about what you should be doing with your brushes and any kind of reusable tools that you might use that you need to either sanitize or disinfect. First things first, I'm gonna just talk about how you clean brushes in between clients. So what I personally like to do is just, if I know that I'm doing a lot of clients that day, the night before I make sure to really deep clean everything. But if I do need to clean brushes in between clients, Cinema Secrets brush cleaner is one of my favorite things to use. It does claim to kill 99.99 percent of bacteria. It does have a quick dry, so you're not waiting like an hour in between each client to allow your brush to dry. It does dry down really fast. Another thing is if you can't get your hands on a brush cleaner, you can use 70 percent alcohol. Um, the only problem with alcohol is it doesn't have any kind of conditioning agent, so it can dry out your brush a lot faster. 70% alcohol is much better than using like a 91% because 91% is going to evaporate way too quickly off your brush. It's not going to allow the alcohol to sit on the brush long enough to really do its job. So 70% has a little bit more water in it. So it allows the alcohol to actually sit on the brush a little bit longer. It still dries very fast. Um, so you're not waiting about like an hour as if you were really washing each brush in between, but that's going to really help get rid of the bacteria in the brush. So what I like to do is take my dirty brush and my brush cleaner and a paper towel or a regular towel maybe like a dish rag I will either pour this into like a plastic or metal cup preferably if you don't have metal around plastics fine but this will eat through plastic this is a plastic bottle but it is a special plastic that it doesn't eat through if you pour this into a plastic or styrofoam cup it will eat through it and you'll come back and it'll be everywhere so make sure you're either using a metal cup or like a plastic cup if you're doing it really quickly if not you could always pour a little bit into the cap and use it that way i don't really suggest doing that because then you're getting this all dirty pouring a little bit into a, a metal cup is your best bet if you're really just doing a few you could pour it directly onto a paper towel a clean paper towel or a clean washcloth always close it because once that spills it goes everywhere and i just take my brush and the cleaner and i like to swirl this around um, until i get as much off as possible this I normally use for my moisturizers and serums, so I might not get a ton of product coming off, but you will see the product that is in the brush start to come off. I like to do this a few times per brush until there's nothing at all coming off of the brush. You will smell the alcohol content immediately. It does have like a soft vanilla scent to it, so if that's not something that you like, maybe opt for a different one, but this is a very popular cleaner it works really well again this is only what i like to use in between clients if i have to i always get a really big bottle we will have a, a little giveaway a link below that just tells you all of my favorite products to use when cleaning when i do deep clean my brushes every night i take them home i take them out of the bag and i lay them all out i don't put any of my dirty brushes back in my brush belt because that is only for clean brushes if I'm putting a dirty brush back with my clean brushes, that means all of those brushes now need to be cleaned. So normally I have my brush bag that I throw all my dirty brushes into. And then at night, I will take them all out and lay them on my counter on a nice big towel um, next to my sink. And I will take either a Beauty Blender, Beauty Blender brand soap or Zote that you could get on Amazon. And just like this big pink bar. And I will use that and I will clean my brushes. What I do is allow the sink water to run or take a clean bowl of water and be able to dip my brush just the tips you only want the tip to be hitting the water you don't want to submerge your brush in hot water at all that will break down the glue same thing with brush cleaner if you submerge your entire brush in brush cleaner it will start eating away at the glue in the brush and that will make your brush fall apart and ruin your brush so always 
whenever you're washing your brushes with warm water, make sure that the water is just hitting the tips, really allowing it to fully be wet, the brush, but not allowing the entire handle to get like submerged because that will really loosen it, especially if you're working with really hot water. And then I'll take a little bit of the soap, I'll swirl it around. Those textured mitts are always really great. You could also get those online on Amazon. And just really swirling it around and repeat that process of wetting the brush, soap, wetting the brush, soap, until there's nothing coming off. And then I also like to take my Cinema Secrets afterwards and go dip in the clean brush to really make sure that alcohol content is killing any residual bacteria left on the brush. When I know there's nothing else coming out, really getting all liquid out of the brush, making sure those hairs are nice and smooth in the direction that I like the brush to be in. And then either laying the brush down off of a counter so that the bristles are allowing airflow to go around them fully or if you have the option of hanging them upside down, that's going to be your best bet because no liquid is going to get trapped inside again. You don't want it in the handle. You don't want it to break down all of the glue. You don't want to ruin your brushes. They're expensive and we need to save our brushes. So upside down is going to be your best bet. All liquid's going to just evaporate out or worst case, you could uh, allow the airflow to be around the bristles, making sure you are not just leaving it all crunched up and however you washed it, because that's going to also ruin the brush. So you want to make sure that you're being super gentle and uh, meticulous about how you leave your brushes when they're drying, keeping them in the form that you want them and laying them all out. That's going to be the best way that you could possibly do it. Another thing that I want to point out with brushes, again, how I said, if you have dirty and clean brushes together, those dirty brushes are now touching the clean ones. You really need to make sure all of your brushes then need to be clean. Keeping your clean brushes separate from your dirty brushes is so, so, so important. So I will also link the containers that I keep my dirty brushes and clean brushes in. I use a brush belt because I'm so old school. You can almost date a makeup artist on if they still wear a brush belt or not. I can almost guarantee that people who wear brush belts are more, sorry, don't come for me, but a lot of us have been in this industry for 15 plus years because that's like, you know, a lot of us started out in retail that way, wearing brush belts. It's just an older school mentality, I guess. A lot of new artists, I feel like they all have their cups or like, you know, the caddies. So I will link everything that I like to use in this video up and around or below in a link for you guys. So that'll be your little giveaway today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helps but I cannot stress the importance of having clean brushes. They should not only look clean, they should not only appear clean, but they really need to be absolutely super, super clean because you can get in a lot of legal trouble for either dirty brushes and giving either bacteria from one client to another because some people don't realize maybe someone had a sty on their eye, maybe someone has a breakout, but that bacteria that builds up in the brush that you're not cleaning, legally they can come after you for maybe giving them a sty or pink eye or something like that because you're not cleaning your brushes. And especially if a client can see that the brushes are dirty, they will take legal action, so making sure I remember when I was working in schools, makeup schools, makeup academies, I would go up to people if my students were using a dirty brush or even if it just looked dirty or maybe the, the brush was stained, I don't care. I would literally go grab it off their station and throw it across the room. I'm like, you're not using that brush. And now you're probably never going to find it. So very important, your clients will notice that those brushes are not clean. They will see it, they will be skeeved out, they might not say anything, but they will definitely say something to you after. And if you cause a breakout, they will send you their dermatology bill and you don't wanna to have to deal with that. Better off just always making sure your brushes are really clean and also always making sure you're taking photos before especially and afters of your clients because if your client did already have a breakout or maybe they told you they had some kind of allergies and their eyes were red, always make sure that you have those befores because if they do try to blame you for any kind of breakout or maybe pink eye or kind of a sty, you don't wanna be held liable. But if you do see anything like that, anything concerning 
do not work on that area. Do not use your brushes, especially if it is a sty situation, you are not gonna be able to disinfect that brush well enough to ever use it on another client. That is a brush that is going in the garbage and any of the products that you use to dip that brush into in between should also go in the garbage. Very, very important to understand the importance of the sanitation and cleanliness of your station because as a professional makeup artist, being sanitary and being clean is going to be the biggest difference in being hired or not hired for someone's big day and getting those really big paychecks. So make sure that you're clean, make sure that you are sanitary and don't upset your clients. Stay tuned, tag me. If you have questions, if you wanna learn about anything else in this industry, please let me know in the comments and I promise you I will get to those videos as soon as this new little baby comes along. I will be shooting more content and I can't wait to share everything with you guys. Love you so much. Bye guys.